Mark 5, 6, 7 tells us of the story. But when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, son of the most high God? In Luke 20, 41, we see several facts. Among them, the worship offered Jesus even by his enemies. Jesus is speaking. And he said to them, How can they say that the Christ is David's son? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. David therefore calls him Lord. How is he then his son? According to the ninth chapter of John, Jesus healed a young man born blind. Then we read in verse 35 through 38, the exciting end of the story. Jesus heard that they had cast him out and when he had found him he said to him do you believe in the Son of God he answered and said who is he Lord that I may believe in him and Jesus said to him you have both seen him and it is he who is talking to you then he said Lord I believe and he worshiped him let me present your inquisitive minds and seeking hearts with a glimpse of who Jesus is according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and following. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first born from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. God is also omnipotent, all-powerful. Who in the world has power over nature and the elements? You say, of course, God. Then tell me, please. Tell me, please. Who was Jesus when he stilled the storm over Galilee, according to Luke 8, 22? And what about his walking over the water, Mark 6, 45? Add to that, he's going up to heaven, defying gravitation at the conclusion of his earthly ministry of redemption according to Acts 1, 4 and following. Elijah was taken up in a chariot, my friends, a chariot of fire. But Jesus went up on his own power because he could do it. Power over life. In Matthew 21, 18, following we read, Jesus had power to annihilate. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, remember he was hungry because he was a man. He chose to be a man. He was a perfect man, a perfect God. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree withered away power over death. The familiar story of raising Lazarus is found in John 11. The body had been in the grave rotting for days. Yet Jesus called him back to life. Jesus also raised a 12 year old girl in Mark 5, a teenage boy Luke 7 and do not forget what he said. He declared, I am the resurrection and the life. John 11:25. Power over Satan and his demons. Luke 8, 26. Tells a fantastic encounter of Jesus with the demonic world. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. When he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, 
What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Power of a sickness. The invitation of Jesus is unparalleled in the history of the world. Come unto me, you who are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He gives sight to the blind, healing to the paralytic, life to the dead. He healed all manner of sickness. In Matthew 12, 15, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Power to forgive. Let's read the gospel from which we find the story, both in Mark 2 as well as Matthew 9. You see, they brought this man, could not get in. They lowered him from the ceiling. Jesus saw him, and the first thing he said, your sins are forgiven, son. The people murmured in their hearts. He knew what they were saying in their hearts. And what did he say to them? We are told, who can forgive sins but God alone? That was their thought. And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of God has power on earth to forgive sins. He forgave the sinful woman. He forgave the thief on the cross. But never once did he ask forgiveness for himself. Never once. He prayed to forgive his tormentors. Power to create. The prerogative of God is recognized in Jesus when he fed the 5,000 according to Luke 9 from five loaves and two fishes. On another occasion, he fed the 4,000 in Mark 8, from few loaves and fishes. First John 5, 20 states profoundly, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ, who is the true God an eternal life. My dear friends, we can honestly, can we honestly, can we honestly, tonight or any time, deny the revealed truth? The credentials of Jesus of Nazareth are authentic and overwhelming. The prophets of old predicted his coming. Predictions he faithfully fulfilled in minute details. Our Heavenly Father confirmed his relationship to him as his son. His miraculous works affirmed his power. The Holy Spirit clarifies this truth to which the apostles and the New Testament testify powerfully. Let me emphasize that God is in reality Jesus. Man, gods have been numerous throughout history, but this is the first and only true God-man, Jesus the Christ. Yet we ask a very serious question. Why did Christ Jesus come if he were a mere prophet? The world did not need more prophets, priests, books, or miracle workers. The God of heaven gives the answer. You will call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus Christ himself came to save you and me from eternal death in hell to eternal life in heaven. He loves you as I love you and far more. We like to say to you what he declared. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Listen to his declaration. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Since God's word states all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all of us become the object of God's concern. Jesus comes seeking you and me and wanting to give you and me eternal life. The full payment for sin is death. Thus he takes that upon himself. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. A secret is revealed. When we hear John the Baptist, evaluation of Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. How you ask? By substitution, he took our place. The first Adam fought the battle and lost. But now the second Adam fought the battle and won. The tragedy of the cross becomes the triumph of the crucified. Why did the ancient Jews have blood?